The range data type is an often forgotten and underused part of the Ruby programming language. People are often surprised when I use ranges in my code because you can use arrays and other techniques and avoid using them entirely. In this video, I wanna show you five different ways that you can use ranges to improve your Ruby programs. First, a quick refresher on ranges. I can create a new range by providing a start point and end point. Here I'm creating a range that goes between the numbers one and 10. You usually won't see this in code very much. Most of the time you use the literal form, which looks like this. Here I'm creating a range between the numbers in one and 10. And when I print it out, you should see those numbers. One through 10. Another way you can create a range is by putting three dots here. What that does is it still is a range between one and 10, but it's not including 10 at the end from one up to 10. Creating a range and then immediately converting it to array is typically what you see in a lot of code. But now let's explore some ways where we can use ranges directly without having to convert them to arrays. Here I've got a small program where I'm checking to make sure the user's input is between a certain value. We're saying that the value should be between the numbers five and 10. And you can see the user has input the number seven here. We're making sure that our input falls between these ranges. When I run the program, you can see it works fine. Let's change this code now to use a range. You can see now the code looks much cleaner and it's much easier to understand. And when I run the program, it should work the same. And that's tip number one. You can use the cover method to figure out when numbers fall within your range or not. In this example, I'm using strings, using the character A through to F for my first range. When you run the program, you can see it is printing out A through F. So Ruby understands more than numbers. It understands a lot of data types that can be sequenced. Here I'm also checking to see, does the character B fall within A to F? And it's saying it does, and it's saying that Z does not. So have a play around and see what other data types you can use with ranges. The next tip is around looping in steps. Here I've got some code that looks a little bit difficult to understand, but it's doing something very specific. What I want to do is I want to loop through the numbers starting at 30, ending at 100 in steps of 10. And that happens to be eight different steps. The i here is going to start at zero, so we have to add three to it to get to our first step, and we're timesing it by 10. And when I run the program, you can see it works correctly. So it's going between 30 and 100 in steps of 10. But using a range, we can clean up this code quite a lot to make it much more readable. Let's see what that might look like. So this is the same program using a range. You can see when you look at it, it's much easier to read and understand what the code's doing. We've got a range between 30 and 100, and we're just saying to step through it in increments of 10. Using ranges combined with our step method makes our code much easier to understand. In this final example, I've got a really big range. I'm storing the numbers between one and 100 million. And I'm also converting them to array here. When we use an array to represent these really big ranges, we have to allocate memory for every single element in the array. And when it's really big, it can take quite a lot of time. In this case, I want the last 10 numbers from this range. Let's run the program and see how long it takes. So to run our program took 1.3 seconds. Let's actually skip the step of converting our data to an array and let's directly ask the range for the last 10 values. The programs output the same result, but now our program's taken a tenth of a second. So that's 10 times less than what it did before. The program would also take much less memory to achieve the same result. Because we can represent these really large spans of data, we can also represent spans where there's no defined end. So we can actually have a range that never ends and we can represent it like this in Ruby. And no matter how hard we try, we can't convert it to an array. So ranges are really great when you have large spans of data that you need to represent or spans of data that never end. I hope you found these range tips useful. If you've got any tips that I might have left out, please add a comment below and please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. Until next time, take care.